Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel S2T. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about anti-solar cells. So let's dive right into it. Now, this is uh, kind of picked up very recently and I'm reasonably sure in 2020 this was all the hype and you must have heard at least one or two news sites like this anti-solar panel. Uh, so, what we are talking about? We are talking about something that works in the dark. Basically, it can work on inside something or it can work in, uh, you know, flat out uh, darkness. It does not need light. It's not working on uh, basically starlight or light from the galaxy or light from the moon. It's not working like that. It needs darkness to work. That is the interesting part. It needs darkness to work. And that is why it is specified as anti-solar now and it's not like a, it's gonna just be there it's gonna provide power and I mean tangible amounts of power not as uh, much power as a normal solar farm but comparable enough that it's a, something that people can consider as a nighttime replacement because right now solar technology is the only technology in green renewables that has uh, you know a dollar per watt is actually close enough for coal technology like if coal gives you power per uh, like basically let's say one dollar per watt uh, solar is like one dollar 0.2 cents or something like that so it's almost close but problem is even then that's the scenario and every com country knows that sooner or later all their coal mines dries up that they know this and many com companies countries mines have already suffered through this say they know solar is a long-term investment problem is what the hell you're gonna do at night now if this puppy can provide even a sip of power like let's say 10 percent power at night that's a big relief that reduces the demand on uh, non-renewable sources and or even in the battery bank so it is a very big deal and it also has no moving parts so solar you have to understand this solar if done correctly it is very like uh, put it and forget it why because solar cells are inherently just a semiconductor bridge and all it does is just converts photons so it takes the energy from the photon and gives it into electron so due to not having any inherent moving parts it can last for a very long time and things that break are generally the inverter and transmission systems and those are quite easily replaced so it's a very long term investment so anything that must compete against it must also have that kind of longevity so that is why this also has no moving part you put it and forget it so before any this kind of magical situations happen and you must have seen there is so much bad scientific uh, things going around where it's like you know some science is true but they're mixing it with hoo-ha and then people are like you know solar roadways and all the jazz so uh, before any of things like that happens people generally have two steps of building something you have science and you have engineering many times science are correct but engineering is impossible then it's a bs or sometimes it's like science is uh, you know uh, meaningless then it does not matter so that is why you do not have free energy system so this sounds like it this sounds like there is a free energy coming out because it needs darkness to work so how the heck is extracting energy so you have to understand the science of it because energy has a simple rule to it it cannot be created nor destroyed so you must follow this rule so what we are talking about is inherently how most engines work in this planet basically be it jet engine be it piston engine be it diesel engine be it steam engine we are talking about a heat engine basically you take heat from one source whatever that may be and you dump it now you while dumping it basically heat going from high temperature to low temperature you get the work out of it and that is why no free energy system works because where the heck you're getting the energy from first let's say you got it from somewhere where where the hell you are dumping it because that dumping cannot be 100 percent efficient it can be close but not no cigar so to say it cannot be 100 so free energy has, that's why it does not work so in this scenario we are talking about a heat engine basically it takes temperature difference from point a to point b and get some works out of it now is that real is that normal that's every single damn engine in the history of existence that's what they do and if you want something that does that without any moving parts you have to look into Peltier uh, thermoelectric devices this can act as a cooler or it can act as a generator and they have been used in satellites uh, like voyager and uh, rovers like a mass rover so you can understand this is time tested uh, technology and it works so that's the whole point you're gonna have a difference in temperature and you're gonna uh, basically extract work because of that temperature difference so this puppy is not magically creating energy it's like there's a temperature difference I'm gonna extract energy out of it so that's the science so science is true we are not talking about pseudoscience science is absolutely true here so how the heck does this work well you have to understand that earth is very hot why it's hot because sun is heating it up but you also have to understand that the earth radiate heats out in this space how the heck it can do that because space is colder there is nothing in space that will absorb it and re-emit it back other than moon so 
so you have earth which is like this it's like a ball floating in space but space is absolutely low temperature like it's as close to absolute zero as it cannot go normally so earth is hot and you have space which is cold so you've got two temperature difference then the question becomes how the heck you want to transmit because there is a giant atmosphere in between you know 100 kilometer thick atmosphere uh, and it's not thick at 100 kilometer but you get the point it's thick thing so we have to find something interesting in that now our atmosphere due to its gas composition has what we classify as a window you have to understand and this uh, when you see atmosphere through me now atmosphere has some things that it blocks some things it lets through so that is why infrared does not go through atmosphere prop, uh, very properly that is why we need james Webb telescope to be placed outside of our system because that specific infrared system be absorbed by the earth's atmosphere so you need something that allows you to transmit without affecting the atmosphere how can you do that thankfully due to gas composition of our atmosphere there is a giant window that window starts from 8 uh, micrometers to uh, 13 micrometers nanometers uh, basically this is an infrared spectrum if you take infrared spectrum there is a giant spectrum like it's huge in the there is a slice little slice here now this slice allows you to radiate heat and that's how earth dumps most of it heats away so that spectrum that bandwidth if you can dump your heat in that it's like atmosphere is not there you must have seen many of the demos where they are showing like you know infrared camera can see through plastic bag but it can't see through glass it's invert of that it's like uh, atmosphere is blocking everything else almost 200 percent but this spectrum can literally go through like there is no atmosphere so that's our way to connecting that cold temperature almost absolute zero of the vacuum of space to uh, heat source of earth itself that's how we are doing it so we have temperature difference from vacuum of space to uh, basically earth and it does not need to come from you know geocentra or like it's just earth itself is hot the atmosphere itself is hot the buildings that heat up during the day they are hot so you have the heat source then you have the temperature difference between the hot uh, surface to like minus 200 degree so you use utilizing that heat difference you're going to run a heat engine and that heat engine is going to give you electricity that's the engineering part of it when you the science you need temperature difference this is how we're getting the temperature difference and this is how we are connecting them because there is an atmosphere window that allows you to transmit okay so that's the mathematics that's the engineering what about the reality now reality in mathematical sense they know from a fact like with all the maths and all that jazz they know that it cannot compete against a solar cell flat out no so if i give you a like one square meter you can expect upwards of 200 watts of power out of it this puppy best case scenario is 25 so that is why every place you will see they can talking about 25 watt per meter square now they built it this is a real thing this is somebody from the university actually sat down and actually built it to run some test on it so what was the power output then the power output real power output was around 25 milliwatt so you're like wait a minute that's a bit too low again that's the reality like when i when somebody talks about 25 watt per hour that's mathematical thing so it's like uh, somebody saying your car engine should give you 100 miles per gallon it can theoretically do that but it has to be like 96 percent efficient or even more but in reality it's 20 percent efficient so that's the reality of it so tamper your expectation because like it has been overhyped like crazy because if you could truly achieve that 25 percent that means all solar farm will produce like you know minimum 25 percent of its power that's a lot of power that's a like backbone level power and most people can do in this way that like hey we have a solar farm that works 24 into 7 and during daytime it gives us most amount of energy amazing like if we will forget about coal like we'll forget about coal if that happens but it's not so easy so how the heck this contraption works it's surprisingly simple because i specified there is no moving part in this so you have this metal disc now this metal disc is coated with a black paint the sole reason for that so it allows the infrared spectrum to be shifted basically it's like a, a in black body emission radiation you want that to be in that window basically if outside the window it will reflect back so you have to be in that window so that black paint allows it to do that and then you want to have heat from surrounding air surrounding buildings the rooftop where it's kept it's going to absorb the heat you throw in aluminium heat sinks those heat sinks are conducted to uh, what we call thermoelectric generator that generator is in the cold side of the generator is connected to the radiator so radiator is uh, emitting thermal radiation in that window where it can go through it can actually go through the atmosphere not bounce back because of carbon dioxide and during this temperature difference between cold radiator and the hot surroundings you're gonna get energy out does this work absolutely this is this was made uh, using household products and if you want it you can build it in your home like this is something doable if you want it heck if you're living in india i am reasonably sure i'm gonna get much more power out of this simply because my building gets hot and it gets as hot as 40 degrees Celsius. 
building itself and the sun temperature can go to crazy amount let's not talk about that so it can be done and they are specifying that some places like deserts and all that especially if the building heats up too much this can act even more efficiently because the higher the temperature gradient between the cold side and the hot side more, uh, the more effective it becomes so reality is there it can be done physics is there engineering is there and we are starting to build it but you have to understand it's nowhere near hey uh, can i order like you know 100 square meter of uh, this uh, anti solar panel no it's not there yet it's like far away but the train has left the station so what we can expect in the future now you have to understand this there is a lot of room for vibrator, like 25 watt per uh, like square meter that's good like that's not amazing but that's good but uh, going from that to like 0.25 yeah that that's that's tenfold you need to improve the thing tenfold and then you have to make it cheap there are many technologies that are amazing but the sole reason nobody uses that is too damn expensive like i'll give you a simple example india in delhi uses cng now cng is quite amazing because it's basically methane but if we let's say all the public transport that is using cng instead of using combustion engine they use a uh, fuel cell hydrocarbon fuel cell which works on methane and it works effectively well it's going to improve our mileage by twice at least and the heat that is coming out of the fuel cells can directly run uh, what we call uh, absorption chiller and you can get the cooling out there so volvo buses which are like you know air conditioned buses india does get hot so running that on the heat energy running the motors on the electrical output you're gonna get like much more higher total system efficiency you are talking about around 60 percent efficient rather than 10 20 percent of the combustion system why don't we do it it's too damn expensive it will cost like three to four times the normal bus so that's the reality of it it must become cheap thankfully inherently everything is cheap and if once mass produce even complicated things become cheap same as your mobile phone did so it can be done physics is there engineering is there however there is one thing with this dude who came up with this idea like the anti-solar panel that was like a, you know oh last concept we might be able to do this also but the main reason why he's so excited about it is he figured it out like how the heck we're gonna dump heat without absorbing heat the biggest problem with our buildings is let's say you want to build something like this you know what will happen if you did this it's gonna heat up why does it heat up because sun heats it up so they figured out a way to design a structure a nano structure that reflects the sun's heat so sun is dumping 100 watts of heat it's like nope it reflects almost 99 percent up now uh, when you have fluid running in it basically these are liquid channels uh, when you have fluid running it fluid is dumping heat into the system now this system is fine-tuned in such a way that it rejects heat in that spectrum so it actually goes away the heat actually goes away it does not retains there it actually cools down so they have successfully managed to do this in the broad daylight while reducing the temperature of the fluid that is circulating without evaporation let that sink in without evaporation because you can do that with evaporation but you cannot utilize that in a desert this book completely sealed you can do that so that is amazing aspect of it so this individual and uh, i have provided the ted talk it's quite amazing so if things can work out if he finally figures out the mass production the large scale commercial and all that it can revolutionize the passive cooling industry basically everything requires cooling all the buildings imagine all their rooftops are like this it's just just a simple thing like you know it's just cooling normally and making sure it's not getting heated up at the same time it's not just like a mirror it's also acting as a radiator at the same time amazing things will happen so and they have he was also lost a small company that is acting uh, selling these puppies as a booster to your refrigeration system reducing electrical cost by around 10 12 percent so it's something that is tangible something that can be made something has been made so it's a lot of uh, basically potential here now if done correctly it can improve our world because his main concern was that as our world heats up we're gonna buy more and more air conditioner air conditioner is gonna dump more heat into it then we're gonna run even more air conditioner and it becomes a closed loop system we're gonna destroy ourselves but if we utilize this where we are like just rejecting sun's heat it's like bro you shall not pass and we're gonna dump our heat into vacuum space broad daylight and easily in the night we're gonna do amazing things that's the whole point of this so i'm not that interested into anti-solar system if it works out if it truly achieves that 25 watt which is very unlikely because again 25 watt was sold to us and we got 0.25 there's a gap but let's say uh, he finally figures out how to like, mass produce those kind of panels it is amazing especially in india this is amazing potential into this so i am looking forward to this uh, future it's going to be interesting at least so this was my presentation on anti-solar technologies <laughs> with the anti-solar panel i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your disappointment and please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching